What's up, everybody? It's your favorite paramedics, favorite nerd, and today we are looking at the MMC Ocular Max all-in-one. It's too much branding. Can we just be honest about that just for a second? It's too much branding. How many brands does MMC need? We got the Ocular Max Remix line. We got the Ocular Max all-in-one line. We got the reformatted line. We got the Infinite Infinity line. It's all a bit much, but neither here nor there. This is a figure I've been very excited about taking a look at. This is their first aid of their upcoming Protectabots line, which does mean three transformations for me and old monkey mitts that I bring along with me, but we'll work through it together, you and I. I did purchase this myself, so I don't have to shout anybody out, which is nice. And I've had pretty good luck this year so far with my own purchases regarding Transformer toys, so let's see if this continues that luck. But in order to do so, we need to start, and in order to start, we need to look at accessories. Which is just one black pistol. Sculpted well enough, no paint on it. Uh, simple, simple sculpt, and it does fold up. Uh, but other than that, not much to report on. The gun tabs into the palm of his hand, but it doesn't really... Uh, plug in so you just have to place it there and then wrap the hand around it, which is a little um, Bizarre and not what I'm used to it's still effective. It's just like wh why include the tab then? I don't know seems weird to me, but it's it works the pistol can also be folded up and kept inside of the door for alt mode and combined mode it'll just stow away there and then close up and plug in like normal and it's only on the right side door the passenger side door so let's talk about the figure. We'll start with the head sculpt. Uh, red plastic, white paint, and then this metallic blue that they use for the eyes that's just, it's not enough. Um, and there's white overspray on top of it. This should have been a knockout, and it's not quite what it, sh what it, what it should have been. Um, it's not bad, but it could have been a lot better. Anyway, the head is on a ball peg. That ball peg is connected to a piece that hinges. So using both, you can get the head pretty much all the way up. A good bit down. A swivel. Confused first aid look. All of that works nicely. I do want to talk about this figure as a whole for just a second. There is something because of the lack of paint on it that does like... It, it does detract... It does end, it's a quite nice figure, like when you manipulate it, the build of it, the tolerance, all of those things. But presentation-wise, it doesn't quite pop like you'd like it to. Um, I just need to get that out of the way. Because it's true to me, and it's something that I have a hard time kind of articulating. It's like, you know, I, I don't know how to describe it, but I know it when I see it, and this is that. Let's continue. The shoulders have a hinge at the base of the shoulder and then a universal joint that comes off of that hinge. So using both, you can get the arm all the way up. You can get a swivel around, but no butterfly joint. You have a bicep swivel. You have a double hinged elbow that gets you the full run. You have a wrist swivel, and then the fingers are on a base pin knuckle, but they have typewriter fingers as a result, and the thumb is on a ball peg. So that will get you up and you can swivel it as you so please. And I did mention that the wrist swivel, correct? Oh, and then they have a little, a little, the tiniest bit of in out as well, because it looks like they're on a ball peg. All right, for the waist, we have a waist swivel. We have an ab crunch that's quite nice. For the hips, we can lift these hip skirts out of the way to reveal universal joints that will get you the full Van Dam. They will also get you Almost the full Monty, but more than you'll ever need. Thigh swivel. Single hinge knee that gets you 90 degrees. And because of all in one uh, engineering, you know, this is kind of a lot going on here. But I'll tell you, it's not as, and I mean just mass wise, but it's not as kind of cumbersome as the Combaticons, in my opinion. We don't really have ankle articulation as much as we have toe articulation, but it does work well. You can get a toe tilt up, which gets you basically the ankle tilt up, a toe tilt down, and then a rocker. So you get everything that you need. It's just, uh, you know, it's kind of a cheat, but it's a cheat that works. So I say forgivable. And then there it is from the back. Um, you know, pretty clean. 
all things considered. Size comparison wise, there he is with some of the other kind of contemporary combiner limbs. He's about the same size as Unique Toys Brawl, and he's about a head smaller than both Fast Toys Drag Strip and MMC's Blast Off. So ultimately, I think probably just, you know, fine, fits in fine. Now, I have my protective eye set from XTB in alt mode because I'm going to be using them for my defense, or I think you guys know that's my plan. But to give you an idea, there's Dead End from XTB, so he's a bit smaller than First Aid. So scale-wise, I'm happier with the MMC bots for kind of the standard scale that a Masterpiece collection sort of dictates these days. Of course, scale is in the eye of the beholder, but it just makes me more comfortable with my decision. All right, so let's get him transformed. The first thing that we need to do is turn his arms into the shape of an L. I think you're supposed to spin the hand so that the palm is facing towards the inside of the body. Flip. And then we have another panel here that flips up. And then that accordion's in, and then that close up. We got our L-shaped box. Okay, so same on this side. Spinning the hand, opening this panel, flipping that in, closing that panel, opening another panel, collapsing here, plugging in there. And we can move these tires down. They slide down there just a bit. Rubber tires too, by the way. The next thing that we need to do is get the cab formed. And in order to do so, we need to get these arms inside the body. So we're gonna spin this head up, flip that up, close the head in, close that in. We'll get that out of the way immediately. We can lift up this backpack here. Don't forget to utilize your ab crunch. It'll give you a little bit of wiggle room. We have to get this component out here and you basically just need to form the roof of the vehicle. So just flip these tabs down and then flip them up. This all becomes pretty intuitive because you know what an ambulance is supposed to look like. Um, and then we can flip this up and you gotta get these arms inside and basically utilize that tab to lock in to there. And then there's a tab at the top of the, uh, where the fist was, that'll lock in to the roof. So utilizing both, tab, tab, no big deal. Same on this side. Spin. No, oh, it came unplugged here, let's see, there. Spin, come around, lock in, lock in. All right, then we have our side panels here. They obviously, you can get this up and out of the way, this piece here. This piece spins, comes down, and latches into these two tabs. Your side panels come up, and they latch in. And then you have this piece, which isn't really super complicated, um, but because some of these tolerances are a little tight, you just gotta make sure that you know what you're doing. So first fan panel here, the first white panel flips down, second white panel flips up, Third white panel, which is this smaller piece, also flips up so that everything lines in and forms the front of the cab. And then you can put down your emergency lights. Then we need to work on the legs. So the whole back section of the ambulance opens up and then you can open that panel. Flip in the majority of the foot, um, which mainly is like the heel spur and underneath area, and then close up that so that it forms a nice L shape there at the back. And there's one other panel that we can kind of flip up and get out of the way, and that's this one. Open this, close this. Now, this whole leg here is straight at the moment, but it will zigzag. So there's one moving piece there, and then there's a separate moving piece at the red. Do you see the red panel and the white panel both, both rotate? So keep that in mind. This piece here is on a slider. So we're gonna try to rotate that down. There we go. Make sure we get it all the way. 
Then we're gonna spin this section here, 360 or 180. I always do that. Why do I always do that? And let's see what else we want to do. So now we have this section. If we get this hand out here, basically this piece comes down and collapses again. There's a tab there and a slot there. And they're going to interlock. And this is a little tricky. There's another tab at the back of it too, at the base of it. Um, because you don't have the space to kind of get the leverage to get it. But as you can see, you know, it's definitely doable. Just a little tricky. The next thing you want to do is get this hand to curl up around the back of the ambulance. So um, you got to utilize a couple different hinges and it eats me up a bit. But you want to flatten it against the back window and then use the fingers to curl down. And then this will come up. Oh, I just undid that and tab in while you clean up the back window. So still pretty intuitive, right? And then close that. So same on this side. Remember, we have two moving sections, this red piece and then another section, which is the white piece. Once again, we're going to slide that down so that we get this nail or screw rather all the way to the end. And remember, we're going to open this section up, flip it open, take this, collapse that and rotate 180 and once again we have to bring this up get the foot inside and then as we flip this over collapse our the back of the ambulance again and then get this heel here to line up with two tabs and to go over top of that notch now we have this hand issue. So if we rotate that out, remember we can collapse at the at the palm, just kind of straighten the fingers and then bend them up back so that it's making kind of a C. And then rotate this all in, line this up, collapse that, and collapse our little door there and make sure that that's straight. All right, so remember we have our two moving pieces so we can kind of get this shaped like that. And now we have to kind of connect our thighs. The thighs rotate or slide in, not unlike some shockwave transformations that we've seen in the past. So if you get them lined up, you can sort of use the leverage of one against the other to help do that. Now you have to collapse these. Remember, one of these hands has a thumb on it and you just want to make sure I think it's this one. You wanna make sure that your thumb is nice and collapsed inside so that this box is open. And then as you rotate in, and remember you can use your ab crunch here if you want to kinda of give yourself a little bit more room. Tab all that together and then use your two side notches here. Um, if they're not flipped out, just flip them out. They have a tent. Mine have a tendency to flip out during transformation, maybe because of the way that I handle stuff. But uh, if they're not flipped out, just flip them out and interlock all of this. And you're done. I'll get it cleaned up. We'll take a look at it. And there it is. I think it works quite well. We got emergency written down the side. We got our rubber tires that roll. Uh, the blue translucent that they decided to use here, it's not as distracting, but it probably would have been better if they just painted it all or used translucent for it all, like just to make sure that it was, you know, consistent. Um, nice little tampo paint work there. Headlights are painted, the little bumper details, um, the turn signals are painted. Kind of the rear, same situation kind of going on back there with the... Uh, the windshield wiper both sculpted in and painted translucent lights so like i think it i think it works i think it looks pretty good um the only complaint that i kind of have about it is in regard to the windows here especially because like these don't have the black outline it ends up throwing it off for me that's a that's a me thing but uh like these are outlined with like the rubber guard, the weather weather strip, I think is what it's called. This here as well. The back window as well, but just not these. This translucent, translucent, translucent. Painted, 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 painted. You know, so it's just, it doesn't match. And that's sort of aggravating for me, but certainly subjective. There it is next to Tiger Tracks. Uh, but we won't stop there today.
there it is next to the protect the bots from uh, X trans bots. You know, uh, it's funny because you know, just the scaling of this set is always goofy, but just how much bigger, or at least seemingly so, it would be compared to these guys in robot mode, but how much bigger the, the, the almost are compared to this. It's just goofy, but what are you gonna do? Transformers, right? So let's get it into combined mode, and we basically just have to kind of reverse what we just did regarding where the hand formation was. So bring back out our shape here, right? And then open this up open this section up you can unflip this flap and unflip that flap spin the rear window 180 and then bring this back tab it back in bring this piece back over bring this piece up tab that back in and then this straightens out but you need to make sure that you have it at the correct, like, proportionate spot. So we're using this tab here to kind of figure out where that's at. Because that'll tab in to the red section there. We're going to repeat the same thing. We're going to unflip, unflip, spin around, tab back in, re-secure. Resecure. Use this as our measuring stick to find out where to place the slider and connect all of this back. Make sure that our thighs are connected. Straighten out our fingers and our thumb. Then you want to orient the arm properly. So spin at the waist so that the elbow joint is showing and then spin at the right below uh, the knee so that the arm was it was just like it's actually it's pretty impressive how they did that but that'll give you the elbow and then the top half you lift up this piece here and then fold down the ab crunch and then fold it back, and then that combiner port will open up to you. And then we can close that back in. And then if you want, you can, you know, lift up this piece here. Like, uh, you know, that's up to you, personal preference and such. Uh, this this port here seems a bit, a bit bizarre to me. Um, but I guess I guess we'll see how it goes. But yeah, an interesting nonetheless. There it is. Um, so you're gonna have obviously a bicep swivel. I don't know how this joint's gonna work. I'm a little confused there, but we'll 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 trust the process. A double jointed elbow. I will say that like this, it's not the biggest deal in the world. But as I've been been manipulating this stuff, like it relies on a lot of moving pieces, and like these two sections here are the only thing that really secure it. So it, it has had a tendency to kind of come apart on me a little bit. Uh, the thumb is on a hinge at the base of the thumb, and then it comes out to a ball peg to give you secondary movement, and then um, two more joints in the thumb, so that's pretty well done. The whole palm is on a hinge, and then each of the fingers is individually articulated. Um, they swivel at the base plus hinge, so basically a universal joint for each finger, and then it comes out to a secondary and then tertiary knuckle. So you're going to be able to get him to emote with his hands as much or um, express himself with his hands as much as you would like, it would seem. And then uh, this piece, which I think I would probably prefer to have down, but, you know, it's personal preference and such. But, yeah, there it is. Uh, we'll show it next to some of the other combiners real quick. So there it is next to his Zeta arm. Um, so yeah, a little bit smaller, sorry, a little bit smaller, but not, I feel like not maybe as egregiously smaller as Bruticus, but I, I can't really recall, but I mean, certain, certainly smaller if you look at it head on, but not crazy. And there it is next to a Warbitron arm. I still have a Warbitron because this is my wife's favorite Transformer toy that's ever made. She just thinks it looks super cool. So I actually got a second one from Robert uh, after I'd sold my first one, but yeah, not that much 
bigger than the Warbitron arm. So we'll see. Final thoughts wise, we'll start with the negatives. And I really, I think I only have maybe one objective negative. And that is just that a lot of the joints are tight, which of course is better than them being loose. But this has two kind of significant effects. One is that sometimes it's hard to manipulate them. And as a result, you end up putting a little bit more force than you might typically use. And it has a tendency to untab elements of it. Now this isn't really a big deal in robot mode or even through the transformation process because most of it is easily fixable, but I am noticing that it's causing a little bit of a lack of stability with the arm mode. Not the biggest deal in the world, not a huge criticism, just something I noticed. Subjectively, I have a little bit more to say. I'm in on this set. I think the sculpts are great. We lost a double jointed knee, I would imagine, mainly because of the all-in-one. Sacrificing the articulation in that regard for the gimmick, which is worth it to a lot of people, just not to me. But really only specifically in the double jointed knee, just because of how large the lower part of the legs need to be be in order to house a hand. Secondly, one thing that I think MMC has a tendency to do is give life to their figures. It's that je ne sais quoi. It's hard to describe what does it. I think their articulation lends itself to it. I also think that their head sculpts lend themselves to it. But there's something about this guy that does seem a little void of life. I'm not sure if it's the color palette with a whole lack of paint, because as we know, MMC can be very frugal with their brushes. But this figure does suffer from it, and it does end up looking a lot more bland than I think a nice color palette applied to it in terms of paint would have done. And that may also be that I've had the fortunate luck of looking at really well painted figures recently and I'm just comparing that to this. You know, in recent months or years when we've been talking about fans toys kind of lacking in articulation and not being able to keep up with the modern trend. Well, with as many masterpiece companies of which there are fewer than I would prefer stepping their paint game up tremendously and MMC never really jumping full feet into the paint game now it's starting to seem like a real missing component when compared to its contemporary competitors, but perhaps none more so than this figure. Now, make no mistake, my positives here far outweigh my negatives. I love the sculpt of this figure. I think MMC is some of the best sculptors in the business. It's super well articulated with the exception of the knees and it probably would have benefited from a butterfly joint, but the rest of it works like a champ. There's something about the way that the joints move in regard to articulation that even though I think this is one of their more lifeless releases, still has a tendency for some character to end up coming through. Can't describe it, don't know what it is. It's that je ne sais quoi, but this figure does have it. You just gotta kind of manipulate it a bit to get it to come out, so to speak. <laughs> the transformation process is elegant, it's fun, it's rewarding, it's intuitive, and relatively effortless. And the way that they've been able to manage the articulation of the combined mode inside of the robot is still kind of mind blowing to me, even though I don't want it or need it. Can't help but notice how impressed I am with it. The plastics feel good. I think it would have benefited from some ratchets here and there, but I'm not sure if it needs it because the tension joints work just fine. Overall build is good. So yeah, it's definitely a strong recommend from me, just maybe not one of their strongest releases but they release a lot of strong stuff so i guess it makes sense hope that helps thanks for listening thanks for watching until next time take care